So number five on our list is shared between the Celestial Emissary and the Witch of Hemlock, both of which are very easy and very boring. The Celestial Emissary is just a bunch of regular enemies, and once you get the boss down to half health, it'll become large with the regular enemies still surrounding it, but it's still very easy to kill. One good thing the boss has going forward is the lore, which is kind of interesting with these creatures being the church's attempt to contact or create a great one, but that's honestly the only cool thing this boss has going for it. As for the Witches of Hemwick, they're very easy and very boring. Most of your time will be spent running around trying to find the witch, and that's not very fun. You can't take time to kill the other enemies that spawn, but they're actually kind of useless and don't do much, so I just ignore them. An invisible boss is really interesting, but the series just hasn't really done it right. So, these two enemies, these two bosses being very easy and very boring, is what lands them number five on our list. Number four on our list goes to Lawrence the First Vicar. Let me start by saying I absolutely love the DLC for this game, and I think it was fantastic. And this is the only dim spot in the DLC for me. Uh, I think the boss falls falls short of what most bosses in the DLC were capable of. And honestly, it's just a reskin of the Cleric Beast, which you fight at the very beginning of the main game. And from a lore perspective, this makes sense, because they're both the same type of creature, with Lawrence being the first of his kind. But honestly, the, the fight's just not very fun. This isn't helped by a second phase that's not very fun either. Most of the time is spent running around and waiting for an opening so you can run in and take some hits. And I don't find that very fun. I like to really be in the face of a boss fighting it the entire time, but most of the time I'm just walking around. That coupled with the fact that this boss does a pretty good amount of damage and has a ton of health, it can really stretch this fight out and it's not really what it needed. Uh, I think this fight was just not not very fun and very frustrating at times as well. <laughs> Number three on the list goes to Miklash, Host of the Nightmare. This boss is really easy in the first phase, having only one move it can do, and other enemies are thrown in just to increase the difficulty, which I think is kind of a cheap way to make a boss hard. As for the rest of the fight, you'll be pushed into a second phase where you are just running around in some hallways and you have to kind of direct Mikolash into the uh, specific room so that you can continue the fight. This is a really interesting concept and I think it's done alright here but it can be very confusing when you're fighting this boss for the first time and you have no idea what's going on. Once you get the boss into the second phase it's really not too hard either with the boss only having a couple added moves in addition to its first move set, but one of these moves is an AoE that can easily one-shot even highly upgraded characters and can also be spammed by the boss in some occasions. And this just makes the boss very frustrating and kind of unfair, very lopsided difficulty, and for that I think it deserves a spot on this list. So a trend with a lot of these bosses on this list are that they aren't extremely difficult, but in my own experience, they were not very great. This boss is a boss that was really easy in my first playthrough, didn't give me any trouble, and it was honestly one of those bosses that's not very memorable. But in other playthroughs on New Game Plus 2, 3, and higher, and also on my Blood Level 4 run, this boss gave me so much crap. It can do a lot of damage in the, once you get into the game pluses, and it can be really annoying to handle all three enemies at once. Uh, and I actually have over an hour of footage of me dying to these things on my waste of skin run, so my personal experience has made this boss one of my least favorite, and maybe for other people it's not the same, but that's my take on it.
And so, the worst boss in Bloodborne is Abritus, Daughter of the Cosmos. Let me start by saying, in my very first playthrough of this game, I did not know what Beast Blood Pellets did. I had no idea. I thought they were just a useless consumable, and I didn't use them. I now know that they are absolutely amazing and will make your damage through the roof when paired with bull paper or fire paper or anything else. And that actually makes this game so much easier. But like I said, on my first playthrough, I had no idea. And a lot of this list is based on experience, and my first f experience with this boss was absolutely terrible. I died so many times. I was stuck on this boss for days, and it was extremely frustrating. So, even though now I don't see the boss as being too challenging, that first time I fought it, it was absolutely terrible, and that will stick with me forever. And that's what gives this boss number one on my list for worst bosses. This boss can also one-shot you pretty easily in its second phase, which really adds to the difficulty. So, overall, it was my least favorite experience in the game. So there you have it. That is my list of top five worst bosses in Bloodborne. It is extremely based off of my experiences with these bosses, and it will probably differ quite a lot from yours. But, uh, that's, that's what I think about this game. None of these bosses are actually extremely terrible now that I have more experience. But it's all my first experience with these bosses that really makes this list what it is. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.